You're listening to Mystery Side Hustle, the number one place here on YouTube for all things for mystery shopping and how to get quick, fast cash when you need it the most. Make sure to check out our previous episodes on our podcast and also review our videos on our YouTube channel. What's going on, everyone, and welcome back to the Mystery Side Hustle podcast here with me, Shay, on YouTube. I'm so happy you're here. It is Friday. April the 28th, and today is the day for you to get to work. We are going to be getting ourselves prepared for this weekend or the week ahead so that we can start getting some money in our pockets. We can fill those gaps for the bills we have to pay, or we can help jumpstart this savings account or a vacation or a big purchase, whatever it is, I'm here to help you with that. So today is going to be about free, 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 everything that is available to you for mystery shopping and i have been doing this for a couple years over 12 years and i just want to keep stressing you guys please do not miss out on these opportunities because when you feel like you have no means mystery shopping gives you the way okay so today episode is going to be about free vacations free food free hotel stays free massages, free anything, because everything is available for mystery shopping. So in our first portion of this podcast, I'm going to talk to you about how to actually acquire these free high expensive mystery shops. Now they come far few in between. And the most important thing is that you must start now. When you are starting off in mystery shopping, like with any type of job or anything in that nature, you must build up the experience so that you can take advantage of these opportunities. There is a small group of people who are always being considered for these top scale, top notch luxury mystery shops, i.e. going to a different country to review an actual hotel. They will pay for your flight. They will pay for the food. They will pay and reimburse for the hotel. I mean, these things are crazy and you would really think they're not real, but trust me, they're real because I have been offered to go to Thailand once. This is when I was younger and I was like, I ain't going to Thailand. I have a baby. I can't take my baby to Thailand, but I was offered. I've been offered to go to resorts in California to go review their spa that was just new on the beach. I mean, it is mind boggling the number of opportunities available. So number one, Make sure you always have a pen and pad or you're going to save this podcast because I want you guys to take action notes so you can start the process. Number one, make sure you are signing up for as many mystery shop companies as possible. Now, I know many people are still a little iffy, you know, because there's so much going on in the world with people being fake, phony, not real scammers. So I always say you never, ever, ever have to pay to be a mystery shopper. And when you sign up, they will ask you for your social security number. Never, ever, ever give that. Go to irs.gov, get you a sole proprietor EIN, okay? This will be your social security number for anything and everything if possible. So you're not giving out your true social security number, because I do not feel confident in anybody having that. Even when I go to the doctors, you're not getting that number. What do you need it for? You know? Um, so make sure you have that EIN when you sign up for these shops, I say, go for things that are much easier. Maybe you are doing a drive by a Burger King or Wendy's or Arby's. Maybe you're going to Walmart and you just have to um, review a actual product in Walmart or, you know, you're going to a clothing store and you got to try on an outfit. You got to review the bathroom, review the store, make sure it's clean. There's no debris on the floor. Those type of things that actually feels comfortable for you that you've done multiple times. There's not much thought into it. But again, always remember when you are doing these shops, you just have to make sure you're very vigilant because you have to make sure you are following the questionnaire so that you can get all those answered so that you can move forward in the process, okay? Now, when you do a couple of those, right? It's going to take a while. I don't mean a month or two. Maybe you may need to wait a whole year because you definitely want to build yourself up. So my building blocks for mystery shoppers from the very beginning, going all the way up to those luxury big big type of shops and even ones that's 
paying you 100, 200, 500, a thousand dollars. It's out there. It's real. Um, I've seen them. I've bypassed them only because at that time I did not feel like going through all those questions. Like, honestly, my brain couldn't handle it. I feel as though as years have gone by, they have gotten a lot better with the amount of information they are asking of us because a person can only obtain so much information in one sitting to recall once they go back. So I've been, you know, doing some tips and tricks and giving out the information and things that I have utilized myself because my memory is not all that. So I'm not even going to kid you guys. I'm going to be so transparent, but using your cell phone, using the MP3 audio recorder while you are performing these shops can help you digest all of that information at a later time without skipping a beat. Okay. That's the number one tool I use and tell people all the time, make sure you have your phone's audio recording on the screen is off so that the person cannot see that screen. I mean, in reality, everybody has their phone in their hand all the time, right? So it will not seem odd for you to be carrying around your phone in your hand, moving it wherever you move it because we are all glued to our phones, which makes this the perfect cover for us to be recording what is being said while we are doing this mystery shop, okay? Now, Another thing I wanted to say is if you are still with maybe one shop company, you haven't really ventured out to any more, I recommend getting a separate email just for your mystery shops. This will be so helpful, especially if you only have one email for all important things in life. You want to separate those because you will get so many emails. I mean, thousands upon thousands when you are signing up for all these different companies and you just want to make sure you're not missing opportunities. Okay. You want to make sure you're not over skipping important life emails from mystery shop emails because it can become so clustered in their inbox. So I decided to do a whole separate email just for my mystery shops. And I have 500 plus emails per day. And then the best thing about it is when you're going through your emails, most of them, I want to say about 80% of the schedulers who send out these emails show how much they're willing to pay in the subject line. So if you know, okay, I have to pay my rent. I'm about $50 short. So I know company A will pay me in one day, maybe a couple hours or maybe 48 hours. Let's see what they have available for me. Go into your email, see if there's anything there, but also just logging inside of the company's website and going to the shopper portal will give you all those opportunities. And I always say, if you have a car, or if you have the means, don't be afraid to travel outside of your area. That is where the real money is. Now, yes, mystery shops are only available per your state. And I wish you guys would just send me your states because many are asking me, can you send me jobs? Well, if you don't tell me what state you're in, I can't send you jobs. Like, yes, I can send out random emails, I mean, random posts on my YouTube channel, you know, saying, hey, you guys, I go a job here. But what would that do for you, right? If you need more money and you need the opportunity, why talk about another state that isn't applied to you? It won't benefit you. So if you really want to get information about opportunities for more money, more cash through these mystery shop companies, make sure you put your state in the comments. Make sure you put your state in the comments so that I can refer to those when I am seeing these opportunities come to me because I get so many all the time that I bypass because I don't live in that state. I'm not going to that state or I just don't want to do it. Like I'm just being so honest. I just don't want to do it. So my loss is your gain when it comes to these money making opportunities and getting this cash all the time. Now, once you have been doing it for a while, you're feeling more confident, you're feeling more, you know, good. I say start with the low tier type of shops. What are those? Like I said, restaurants, um, gas station, photo, maybe even um, going to a clothing store or a shoe store. You're trying on something, fast food restaurants. Um, yeah, those ones are a lot of simple. They have questions, but 
These are very, very familiar. You know, you, you do this all the time. You won't be able to, um, you know, get, get too confused because the things they'll be asking you is second nature. Okay. The next tier of shops is the ones I call are a little bit more, um, a little bit more tedious, a little bit more, uh, you have to be on your game. And those are banking shops. Those are hotel shops. Those are amusement park shops. Those are spa type of shops. Um, and things in that kind of nature for those type of shops, you definitely have to, you know, be more, um, I want to say be more detailed in your writing. You have to be so specific. Um, you have to recall, recant. And this is where that trick of recording the conversation comes into play. Um, you may even have to do some secret videos and some secret photos while you are there. Now, the lower tier one sometimes will ask you, like, for example, you may have to go to McDonald's and they want you to go take a picture of the actual menu. Well, how suspicious is that you standing in line with your phone up in the air, taking a picture of the menu, right? That's a clear way of being like, uh, why are you photoing? you know, our menu. So especially if the place are used to people coming in there as mystery shoppers, right? So for that case, what you would do, what I have done many times, I act like I'm on an actual FaceTime. I'm like, hey girl. So I got, got my phone up in the air. I'm like moving it from left to right. Then I will turn it um, sideways and have it in the long view so I can like take the picture while I'm like talking and Again, people don't think twice because, I mean, when you are FaceTime and you have your phone in front of your face, you have your phone pointed outward so they can see your whole body or whatever. And of course, I want to make sure there's nobody behind me so they can't see what I'm doing. If I have to step out of line, I will do so and just zoom into the picture. I mean, you have to really think outside the box because they need to see things like McDonald's want to make sure that menus are looking good and other places. So those type of things would be asked of you. But when you're doing a banking shop, you know, that they want to know how many tellers, how did they dress, what were their um, appearance like, you know, what what was offered to you from this actual banking um, product? Can you recant to you the exact phrase they used to bring about the conversation for the product? You know, all those things is like, what? And that's where that recording your conversation comes into. Okay, so we have our lower tier shops and then we have our middle tier shops. And then I want to say the top, top, top tier shops is when you are actually um, going to vacations, you know, going to amusement parks and you're traveling on a plane. So you got to recant what you did on the actual airplane to get to the location and, you know, who approached you, how they look, what was your room like? Um, I mean, I haven't experienced much more um, opportunities outside of those type of areas, but based upon what information is asked of you on those shop forms is, is how I'm able to categorize low, medium, and high because they all range in information, right? And we want to make sure that we're not just going to jump two feet into something when we definitely need to stay at tier one. And of course, you do have the opportunity at any time if you sign up for a shop, you just feel like this is not for me. I don't like that. I don't want to do it. I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel confident. That is totally fine. Never feel so afraid that you're like, I don't want to just not do it because I may not ever get the opportunity to do it again. Well, let me give you a tip right? If you signed up for Beyond Hello and you signed up for a shop you have to do in 24 hours, you realize, I don't want to do this shop, but you're afraid to actually, you know, tell the scheduler for whatever reason it is. I'm I'm not condoning this, but I have done it before. And I have also um, realized it's better to just communicate, hey, I can't do this shop. I do apologize. I can do it another day. They would likely either one, take the shop away from you, give it to somebody else, put it back in the queue or two, give you a citation for committing to something, but then backing out last minute, which makes the actual scheduler have to hurry up and find someone else to take over that actual shop. 
And, you know, that can feel like, oh, man, I got a citation. It's going to hinder me from future shots with them. But, I mean, in reality, if not many people are taking advantage of these shops, they still are going to consider you because they need these shots to be done. Just don't make it a habit. The other option is just delete your profile and make another one. Like they don't track you. They only track your email. So if you have another email you want to utilize, just take your profile, change out the information and close it out and then open up a whole other profile and start applying for other shops with the same company. Like you can do that. I don't recommend that. But if something transpires where it's like, you know, out of your control, nothing that you did wrong, but the schedule is being unreasonable or whatever type of situation that has transpired where your account is like in a really bad state, but you do like the company, just switch out your information, open up a whole other account with a new email and go from there. Okay, so yes, free, free, free is the way to go. And I always want to say if you have the opportunity to do things where it revolves you getting free food, free clothes, free gas, a free vacation, you want to definitely look to see how you can go about that. Now, if you feel as though I'm ready, I've only done about two shops and I want to jump into that. When you find a company like like Amusement, Amusement Advantage, that is where I go for all of my fun type of shops where they want you to go to amusement parks or go to different type of events and then they reimburse you so for this type of place you're not going to get the tickets to access the gate free right so say they say hey we want you to go to six flags to review the water park area even though six flags is more than just the water park area it doesn't mean you're just going to go to six flags and focus your entire trip on water park no you're going to have your fun you're going to bring your family your friends your kids and they will say hey we will give you um up to four extra tickets um we're not going to go over that anyone else you bring have to buy their own ticket they typically will also provide the option for you to get some type of food voucher but this is going to all be reimbursed so you must have the cash on hand to make those initial purchases, okay? Then when you successfully complete the mystery shop, they will ask you for your form, your receipts, and then they will review everything and reimburse you. Now, this is where you must definitely be sure you are ready for this level of mystery shops because all the other ones in the lower tier they don't ask you most times to be reimbursed. They will actually um, give you the give you the stuff. Restaurants and fast food, um, and even some clothing ones will say, "Hey, go to this store, try on a pair of pants. You know, purchase it. Wait about thirty minutes to an hour, then go return it. Give an excuse and get your money back, or you can keep it." restaurant ones they will say go you know do a whole meal bring your friends and family but you're only going to be reimbursed up to this amount of money so make sure you're not going over that amount if you want to make sure that your fee which is the amount they're going to pay you for doing the job is going to be considered a profit versus going towards the overall bill and at that time you know you can dictate well, what is the best option? Because yes, you may want to get a free meal, but you may not have the money for that. Yes, you may want to get some some jeans, um, but you don't have the money to cough up to actually do that actual um, shop to get reimbursed. So you so you have to be cautious and careful when you are doing these shops. Um, that's why I'm trying to make sure I'm giving you an understanding of the different type of shop expectations before you get there. But also you always, always, always have the availability of the scheduler. I have not once had a moment where I had questions that I could not get answered by a scheduler. So reaching out via email, if you don't like talking to people on the phone, is totally fine. They are 
email priority anyway. So just email them back because they give you all their information when they send you out the confirmation that you have been chosen for that mystery shop. Let them know, hey, I need some clarity on something I'm reading in the shop guidelines you know, so on and so forth. Because I've come across many times, I've gotten a mystery shop where the scheduler isn't really being honest about what's expected of the mystery shop. And then I get to the shop guidelines and it is so much more and the pay is not equaling up to what I feel I want to be paid for it. And you can definitely raise a concern. You can say, well, I don't like this because you did not specify the amount of depth that's required for this mystery shop in your advertisement to get it fulfilled. And then I get to the shop guidelines and this information is requesting so much more of my time for the amount of money to be paid to me to fulfill this shop. So I don't want to do that or could you give me more money? So you can definitely do that. Again, you are your own boss. They are not your boss. You can say, look, I can do this, but this needs to be a lot more. If you are driving your car somewhere and it's far, hey, can you give me some gas money? Because I don't have the means to get to that location and back. It's cutting into whatever. Like you don't even have to give them a big old spiel. Just say, I see that you have, well, before, well, I always say, before you apply, you know, you like it, you see it and it's open. Send them an email and say, hey, I see this shop is located about 30 miles from my home. I'm willing to do that, but can you supply some more money to go towards gas? They may ask you, well, how much would you like? $20 seems to be a, a good situation depending upon the type of car you have. But um, yeah, you can definitely be like $20. And they'll say, okay, let me see what I can do, which always ends up being sure. I will up your pay to include $20 to go towards your gas so you can fulfill this shop. So, you know, you do have those options. Now, I'm not too sure about public transportation, but I don't I don't see how, you know, it can be a problem, you know, if you are going to be doing an Uber or something and you or Lyft and you need to spend that cash to go do the shop, you should be able to say, hey, I'm going to be doing a ride share and I need to actually get reimbursed for that to go complete this shop. And just wait to see what they say. Don't, I, re I repeat, don't ever apply for a shop, get accepted for a shop and then request, hey, can you do this as far as giving me money for gas? And then you're hoping they're going to say yes. If they say no, then you have to go right ahead and cancel that shop and risk getting citation. So just being very mindful and um, being very, um, what's, what's the word I want to use? Oh, I can't even think about it, you guys. But I mean, just being proactive. There we go. Being proactive to ask these questions, get confirmation is definitely going to help. Okay. So once again, there are many ways for you to go about getting things for free, right? You want to start off with those lower tier things, get comfortable, get confident, understand the process of mystery shopping, have money on hand, and then move up into those different shops. Each location that you apply with, each company that you apply with online will tell you most times, not all the time, all the time, I want to say, what type of areas they focus on, whether it's restaurant, whether it's banking, sometimes, and I will say, honestly, you rarely see them say we do spas or we do hotels or we do, um, you know, out of this, out of the country type of shops. Those things aren't listed on their site. It never is. Those are only given to those people that have been shown to be consistent and reliable shoppers. You will be given those opportunities when they see you are consistent and reliable. Now, if by chance, which is how I got into um, doing my first hotel mystery shop, was somebody dropped out and didn't do it. And then an email came out, hey, I'm in desperate need of somebody to come and fulfill this mystery shop for a hotel. I had no experience, none. But I realized, hey, I mean, I've been to hotels all the time why not give it a shot I mean how hard can it be I mean honestly so I did the shop and I just basically 
went in it like I did any kind of hotel, you know. I just had to recall the information. Sometimes I had to go back down the steps, I mean, go back down the elevator and look at the person I actually talked to. They was like, you know, what color was their hair? Um, did, did they have on a, a button with their name? Did they have on a tie? Like, you just asked them specific questions about the uniform that I could not remember because I only had audio. I didn't have a video playing. So sometimes having your video recording and, you know, still having it in your hand facing outward so they can't see your screen can be helpful as well. But I mean, it was my first time, right? So I didn't really know, but now I know how to effectively perform a hotel mystery shop by making sure I'm gathering all the information using things I have learned along the way to help me gather the information so that later on today, I can get that report sent and get that money sent to me. So just remember, you guys, take your time, figure out what works for you and what doesn't. Start off slow and pace yourself with these shops. If you are looking to maximize in the very beginning, I need to get some, some quick money coming to me consistently, then using a calendar and other things like that and stacking up your shops will definitely aid you in consistently having money coming to you every single month from mystery shopping. But you must be very, very organized so that you don't skip or miss doing a shop and you will not jeopardize your profile or your rating as a mystery shopper with each specific company. So I'll be doing in my future podcast, other things on how to be more organized and how to stack up your mystery shops like a regular job in a sense. So you can knock out a handful or more in a couple hours. So like you're set, you're, you're hitting your goal and things like that. So I hope today's podcast gave you some information about the opportunities out there for free things, being a mystery shopper, the different tier of actual shops that I categorize for myself that helps me understand um, and helps you understand as well where you should start and where you possibly want to go at as far as I will skip over maybe a hotel shop right now because it's too much and just start doing food and restaurant and clothing store, things like that. So until next time, make sure you're checking out the podcast, um, previous episodes, and I'm going to be posting shops that are available for you guys to make some money on my YouTube channel as a post. So if you're not subscribed, do so. You can get those notifications and subscribe as well.